be switched off because of a court case, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I call the honourable member Simon Bridges. Mr. Chair, I move that the question be now put. Mr. No. Oh. I call the honourable Leanne Delzell. Mr. Chairman, I was just I was just going to give a very good quote. I was just about to give a very good quote from Mr. Justice Tipping. So um, I'm pleased that I'm just pleased. He's, he's a very special individual. So. Um, uh, and uh, what he was talking about was that the reason, the reason for the court case, the, the decision going the way that it did, spoke of a deliberate or, at the very least, a reckless disregard for the boundaries of legal power. And um, you know that, 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 that the court case is, um, you know, w w was, w it was the correct decision to make on the basis of, um, you know, the uh, w what, what had occurred. And what I'm worried about here is that when the bill was originally introduced into Parliament, we were going to fold the serious fraud office into the um, police. And so there was going to be an, um, I can't remember the name of it, was it an organised crime and financial um, bill, yeah, off comms, I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was... It, it, was, it wasn't the SIS, <laughs> it wasn't, but I, I can't remember the name of it, but it was, the, it, it was a particular um, a structure at the head of the police, and, there, and I know that the police were very um, pleased to be um, taking over that role because of so much of the organised crime um, swaying into this financial area for a whole lot of um, different reasons. But the point that I want to make is, is that that's why the legislation was framed as it was without the Serious Fraud Office. And that's actually now why the Serious Fraud Office must be brought within, its, um, within the range. We are not objecting to the extension of powers to the police. We just believe that the powers um, for the Serious Fraud Office need to be brought within um, the framework of this legislation. And the whole purpose of the Law Commission review of all of these matters, and I, I can't remember the exact words, I, I can't imagine that Sir Geoffrey Palmer used the word dog's breakfast, but it was that all of the different laws that existed around the place that made no sense. It, was, it, it needed a bit of... Um, it, it needed some clarity brought to the picture so that we could get some consistency across the search and surveillance provisions. And that was what the legislation was designed to do. And I think that we, um, unfortunately, at the time, our standing orders prevented the select committee from doing the job that I actually believe it would have done. I believe that the Justice and Electoral Select Committee would have recommended the extension of this bill uh, to the Serious Fraud Office. They would have dealt with that issue at the Select Committee and it would have come back in that um, frame, except that they couldn't do that simply because they were advised at the time that the standing orders prevented them because it was out of scope. But actually, fast forward to today, and that out of scope question wouldn't have existed. The debate would have occurred in a much more um, robust way and there would have been a decision made, not on procedural grounds, but, but whether or not there was um, a, enough power of persuasion um, at that select committee to get that change. And I think that the process of the select committee has actually been extraordinarily good. And the ongoing engagement between the Minister and um, our spokesperson on justice has also been good. And we have acknowledged how well the Minister has been prepared to engage on these issues and, and, and we pay credit to her for, um, for t adopting that approach. This is a good way uh, for Parliament to do the right thing. If we're not going to be back in this Parliament for a long time looking at this issue again, which is the Minister's argument for not having a schedule of offences, well then why would we let this opportunity go by? Um, not to address the, um, the question of the Serious Fraud Office coverage. And I'm afraid the Serious Fraud Office has not served us well in terms of this Parliament's expectations of their role um, in the way that they have used that power on a far more uh, frequent and, and, and actually spurious basis than they ought to have used it. Um, and I believe we almost wouldn't have been having this argument if, um, if they had not used their powers in the way that they had. And that has been the primary objection that we've had, is holding this back 
um, for another opportunity for the House to look at it sometime in the future. I think this is the opportunity that the House has to fix this problem and to fix it now, and then we get agreement across the House. I call the Honourable Member Tim McIndoe. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. As many of that opinion will please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Party vote has been called for. The clerk will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. Eight votes opposed. Māori Party. Two votes in favour. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Honourable Members, the ayes are 63, the noes are 57, the motion is agreed to. But before we put the final motion, we have to deal with a number of amendments. The first one is the Minister's Amendment set out on SOP number 12. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The party vote has been called for. The clerk will please conduct the party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 8 votes opposed. Māori Party. 2 votes opposed. Mana. 1 vote opposed. Act New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Honourable Members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 59, the Minister's Amendment is agreed to. The next question is that Clause 32A and others in the name of the Honourable Member Charles Chevelle, the type skipped amendments to Part 2 that proposed to raise the threshold for the availability of examination orders to offences punishable by a term of imprisonment of 10 years be agreed to. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Aye. The ayes have it. Party vote has been called for. Party vote called for. The clerk will please conduct the party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Greens Party. 14 votes in favour. New Zealand First. 8 votes opposed. Māori Party. 1 vote opposed. Mana. One vote in favour. Act New Zealand. One vote opposed. United Future. One vote opposed. Any other votes? Honourable Members, the eyes of 40, the nose, sorry, 49. The, eye, oh, the eyes of 49, the nose are 70, the motion is not agreed to. 
The next one we have is in the name of the Honourable David Parker. It's to clause 31 1A and others, and it's typescript amendments to part two relating to the powers of the Serious Fraud Office. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. No, Senator. Party vote's been called for. Clerk will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 votes in favour. New Zealand First. Eight votes opposed. Māori Party. One vote opposed. Mana. One vote in favour. Act New Zealand. One vote opposed. United Future. One vote opposed. Honourable Members, the ayes are 49, the noes are 70, the motion is not agreed to. The question now is that part two, as amended, stand part. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. Aye, party votes call for. The clerk will please conduct a party vote. Thank you. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. Eight votes opposed. Māori Party. Two votes opposed. Mana. One vote opposed. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Charles Chevelle. Seek a point of clarification on the vote. A moment ago, the vote for the Māori Party was cast one vote uh, against, and I think the vote just now was two votes. That's correct? That is correct. Um, the Labor's uh, SOPs, they're voting one opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Members, the ayes are 61, the noes are 59, the part two as amended will stand part. The question now is that part three debates on clauses 42 AA to 86 stand part. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Minister Judith Collins. Oh, thank you Mr Chair.